Well, it's, uh, I must say, the th uh, to think that Elvis Presley was uh, so keen on the Holy Grail, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's beyond belief, really. It's, uh, it seems so odd. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a huge Elvis fan. I've always has, have been since I was a kid. And uh, the, the sh I, cannot, I cannot convey to you the shock that went through my entire being, through to my very core, when I read that Elvis was a Python fan. I mean, I just can't quite believe that. It's a bit like, well, I mean, knowing that Spike liked Python. Um, but I knew Spike quite well, and it was different. But Elvis is still a legend in my mind, you know, sort of uh, the greatest sort of entertainment legend in my lifetime, I should think. I can't, yeah, I mean, I, the idea that Elvis Presley would be laughing his head off at, you know, um, this parrot is dead just seems bizarre to me. I mean, it's just such a weird concept. The idea that he would even enter into Elvis's frame of reference, but that then he would be a fan of it. I was lucky enough to interview Jerry Schilling, who was the youngest member of the Memphis Mafia, the entourage that surrounded Elvis. Elvis's biggest pastime was to rent movies at a movie theater called The Memphian in Memphis about 12 o'clock at night. And one night he had picked this, this movie that um, he, he liked the title, liked what he read about it. And uh, we'd always get six or seven movies because if he didn't like one, he would just, you know, uh, get the next one or, you know, stop it or whatever. And it was the most bizarre thing I had ever seen. Elvis loved it. I mean, he was, he was laughing so much that he was, eyes were just tearing. Well, I was, uh, I, I, I love the fact that, uh, that Elvis screened the Holy Grail because there you have a, an iconic, purely American figure with purely American sensibilities and humor and in the way he was brought up and the things he watched on TV and the comedians he saw live and the comedians who opened for him in Vegas. And for him to embrace the Python style, you know, this just, it just comes back to the point that yes, they did change the world and they were able to connect with everybody. Uh, the scene though that Elvis used to uh, imitate break on a set, movie set, you know, just to kill time or something. And he would start going through the scene, the sword fight scene, the arms cut off and, the, and you know, he would just die laughing. And there's this guy still ready, you know, to fight. And he thought that was the funniest thing. We played a lot of football, you know, and uh, at one time we were playing and, you know, he literally broke his finger. And he, oh, you okay, Elvis? Merely a flesh wound. <laughs> and he did it just like the movie. The fact that, that just the very idea of Elvis knowing those catchphrases and him being as annoying as my brother as well, sat next to Priscilla on the sofa. This is a flesh wound. <laughs> well, you, uh, I am French, you silly English uh, niggard. I'm French. Linda Thompson's girlfriend told me that Elvis would keep her, her awake at night doing the Curry's brain sketch with him. Oh, hello, love, you've all got a new brain. <laughs> well, that's fucking mind-boggling, isn't it? I mean, the, the idea that Elvis is doing that, and I was looking back at it recently, and I realised why, because she says, oh, she's testing his brain, she says, oh, no, no, hang on, Mr. Presley. She says Mr. Presley in Curry's brain. So that must mean he thought we were talking directly to him. And he called everybody Squire from the Nudge Nudge sketch. <laughs> oh, Squire. Which is That's just, because I was a huge Elvis fan. That was like so weird and, and sort of trippy just to think that Elvis was a Python fan doing those voices. Yeah. No, Elvis Presley was apparently into a lot of really cool things that I didn't know about. Because uh, I wasn't, he, he sort of died just as I, was, as, as I was growing up. So I was never really involved in that. But as I got older, I discovered that he was into all sorts of cool stuff, had like a collection of samurai swords and <laughs> was really into crazy comedy and other kinds of music that you just wouldn't expect. So you go Elvis, there's a reason he's a king. Did you interview Elvis? That would seem impossible. I do, I, I do think that in the weird way, in the weird way, in the same way that Elvis was kind of outrageous and shocking for a generation, um, I'm sure that, that Python was for, for another generation. Elvis was truly uh, a unique, I think a natural rebel. Uh, his influences were early Brando, James Dean, 
rhythm and blues music. You know, surrounded as he was by his his sort of entourage, and even though he by that point was such a figure of the establishment, you know, maybe there was still a sort of little grain of of that rock and roll spirit that made him so exciting when he first appeared, and maybe that there's something in Python that kind of chimed with that. Things that were not predictable were very uh, appealing to Elvis, and that's why Monty Python, Doctor Strange Love, um, Blazing Saddles, he loved those movies. Or maybe he just liked silly stuff. That could be another reason. Yeah, I sort of understand that. I can understand why. The, that isn't odd to me. It's not odd to me that, that Elvis Presley liked Monty Python. It's, it's because, you know, it's nothing to do with him. When he saw Monty Python movies and he saw the freedom they had, the same way as when he listened to Beatles records and when they were touring, uh, and he wasn't getting that freedom. I like the image of Elvis Presley reciting Python lines. That's pop culture release, re reaches its apotheosis in that moment. There's nothing Andy Warhol can do about that. Um, I'm very pleased. I'm very, very pleased. And it's lovely to know when you make people laugh. But it's uh, once or twice people, comedians, have, have told me that, that Python had a bit of effect on them. Comedians I really admire. And uh, that, that, uh, that feels better to me. I mean, I'm glad he liked it, but it doesn't seem very important. You know, when I first uh, saw the Holy Grail in Memphis with Elvis, I thought it was kind of silly. You know, I wasn't used to it. I mean, what? This, this is insane. I think it was so different for most of us uh, that I probably would have never gotten it if, uh, you know, back then, if it wasn't that Elvis was just so keen on it.